everyone, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to be talking to you all about uh, Scottish independence. Uh, Scottish independence is a really cool phenomenon that's happening in world politics today, um, mostly because we don't really see first world countries uh, choosing to become independent from a bigger union. Usually there's a lot of violence and political unrest involved, such as the case with Crimea right now, um, but Scottish independence is very different because there is a vote involved and there's a lot of uh, political stability and peace. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a history lesson and a geography lesson to put the issue of Scottish independence in context and then we can talk a little bit about the issue as it's developing now. So um, Scotland is part of the United Kingdom. Uh, the United Kingdom consists of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And uh, Scotland joined the Union in 1707. Wales uh, was the first in the 16th century, uh, 1535 and 1542 <coughs> respectively. And Northern Ireland joined about a century later in 1807. Uh, and just a little bit of uh, Vocabulary, Great Britain is not synonymous with the UK. Great Britain means uh, England, Wales, and Scotland, not including Northern Ireland, it's like the continental area. But we are gonna be talking about Scotland, which is this area right here. It's the northern uh, part of it that includes the Shetland Islands and the Orkney Islands. So that's, uh, and just to give a little bit of context, uh, the land mass and population size of Scotland is roughly about uh, the same as the state of Massachusetts. So a little bit of a history lesson. Uh, as I said before, the Act of Union uh, was passed on May 1st, 1707, which was the piece of legislation that combined the Scottish Parliament with the English Parliament. Um, this was a parliamentary union, not a monarchical one, uh, because Scotland and England shared the same monarch beginning in about the 16th century. Uh, king James was the king in this time, and so and he had been the monarch of Scotland and England. Previous to this, it was just the parliaments now joined um, to create laws for both countries. Um, centuries later, in 1998, uh, the Scotland Bill uh, created a devolved Scottish Parliament, which uh, it, de devolution is basically the process of uh, gaining more political rights. So Scotland has been gaining more legal and political life rights over that land uh, since 1707, but mostly in the past two decades or so. Um, and this is the Scottish Parliament right here, these pictures. Uh, this was built in 2005, and it's really a fantastic building. Um, so right now, uh, Scotland is, has set a date for a referendum vote of uh, September 18th, 2014. A referendum vote just means a vote by the people, uh, and if 51%, so half plus one, vote yes in September, then Scotland will become an independent nation. Uh, this guy right here is Alex Salmond. He is the first minister of Scotland. So if Scotland goes independent, he will be uh, essentially the prime minister. So the same role that David Cameron has in the UK, this will be Alex Salmond in Scotland. So the plan right now is for Scotland to go independent, keep the pound sterling as their currency, and join the European Union. That's the plan. There are a lot of different permutations that this split could go. Um, I'm gonna share a couple with you right now. Um, uh, there are lots of different options. I'm just gonna share a couple right now. So the best option is if it was an amicable split. So um, if Scotland goes independent, they keep the pound sterling, and they get to join the European Union. If that's the case, the United States isn't really gonna to have to um, tow any uh, international tensions or uh, cross any international boundaries because everyone will be happy with an independent Scotland. Um, a kind of bad situation is if the split didn't go as well, if uh, the UK didn't support uh, the split for an independent Scotland, which is most likely the case. Uh, David Cameron, the man in this picture, um, has uh, been adamantly against uh, Scottish independence. He is the lead of the Better Together campaign, which is the opposition to the Yes campaign for Scottish independence. Um, the other issue is if uh, they don't get to join the European Union right away. There's a process for joining the European Union, um, and Scotland has been saying all along that they'll, they'll just be part of the European Union, and they 
haven't really um, talked about the issues surrounding what that means. So um, there are a lot of different ways that the joining the European Union could affect an independent Scotland. Uh, the worst situation would be if there was no separation at all. Um, that would kind of create a big political split in Scotland because the Scottish National Party, so the main party that's pushing for independence right now, would have to rethink their strategy as a party in Parliament. They are the majority in Parliament by quite a very significant amount, and so that would mean a lot of political unrest and political change in Scotland. Um, if they did go independent, but they didn't get any support from the UK, they weren't allowed to keep the pound sterling, and they didn't get to join the European Union, Scotland would just be kind of like this entity floating in the global <coughs> space. So um, it would be up to other first world and other countries in the world to decide to join on the bandwagon of Scottish independence. And so the United States is going to have to kind of figure out if that's worth risking the friendship between the uh, UK just to be friends with an independent Scotland. So I'm glad everyone laughed. <laughs> um, so the issue of whether the United States should support an independent Scotland or not is going to depend on the split. If there is a lot of support from the UK, then it really isn't going to be an issue. But if there isn't support from the UK, then the United States probably won't support independent Scotland, mostly because there isn't a lot that Scotland can provide them strategically. Right now, one of the biggest strategic uh, cards that Scottish has to play is Trident, which is the nuclear weapon that's housed in the Clyde, which is the coast off of Glasgow. Um, but Scotland has the, uh, decided that they will become a non-nuclear nation if they go independent, and so Trident will re be removed from this space in Scottish waters and placed somewhere else, and there really isn't a plan for where Trident is going to go, so um, the United States isn't really going to gain a lot, and especially in terms of military power. Um, the biggest scandal in Scottish independence is that the Better Together campaign, the opposition to Scottish independence, uh, just leaked a white paper uh, where David Cameron, the Prime Minister of Scotland and the biggest opposition to Scottish independence, um, who had been adamantly saying that Scotland wouldn't uh, be in a currency union with the UK. A white paper just came out and said that of course they would be in a currency union with the UK because it's better for the UK. Scotland is retained in that space. And this is a really big scandal because it's new and the Better Together campaign kind of looks a little bit two-faced and they kind of look a little bit like they don't know what's going on. And so um, the Scottish vote right now is pulling at 45% and the Yes campaign believes that this uh, split between the Better Together campaign is going to boost their numbers to 51% by September. So we as Americans, one of the greatest superpowers in the world, need to decide where we stand on this issue. Are we going to support an independent Scotland, or are we staunch unionists and believe that the UK should remain intact? So, thank you very much. <laughs>